Hello, I'm Mark Tupper from the Herald Review, Executive Sports Editor, and uh, we're doing a little Facebook Live thing today to try to answer some questions. Uh, kind of an interesting time, just back from Chicago, Big Ten Football Media Day, um, up there trying to learn a little bit not only about the Illinois team, but about the Big Ten. And, um, and then uh, basketball, of course, never far from people's mind. And when I uh, announced that I was going to do this, I said I would also take questions about cooking and um, um, and believe it or not, I've got one. <clears throat> so that I'm saving that for the last. So if you don't want to hear that one, you can bail after we work our way through some of these other ones. Um, I'm also not, uh, uh, I don't present myself as any kind of a recruiting expert. So, um, you know, there are people out there who will uh, address the latest um, high school freshman point guard. But um, anyhow, so um, I've got these written down here. The questions as submitted to me. And here we go. Um, this guy says, I don't follow Illinois football as much as Illini basketball. Uh, there's been a lot less to follow lately, but I do have one question. There was an awful lot of hype about what a great hire Lovey Smith was, but last football season didn't look a lot different than the season before. Has there been anything you've seen that would lead you to believe that hiring Lovey was really a, a great as a move as the hype machine would have us believe? Well, um, uh, let's be fair about what last year was. It was an, an unbelievably late start for him. Uh, and that's nothing we can blame on him. Um, Josh Whitman didn't get hired until late. Josh Whitman moved about as fast as an athletic director can move to make a bold uh, change at the top of his football program. Um, Lovey really had no chance to establish any kind of a recruiting class. They pieced together what it was. If you remember, before he got there, it was kind of a mess. And so um, uh, I don't think it's fair in any way to judge a lot based on last season. I think this season will have a more fair judgment on a number of things with the understanding that they still have a really thin roster. So um, um, I'm going to be watching in training camp, though, uh, the coaching staff, because last year they didn't even know players by name. They had everybody wearing their names written on adhesive tape slapped on the front of their helmets. This year they not only know who people are, they know how they play, how they practice, where they should play. I think they'll have a much better idea. Um, the problem this year is going to be that the roster is so thin, they haven't ha had time to really get their recruits in there to develop any kind of depth. So while I can see talent, for instance, on the offensive line, I think that could be the offensive line could be a pretty good group. That falls apart the minute there's injuries. And, um, and I think that's the case at a number of positions. And so, um, you know, Lovey has said they're not going to bang around on each other a lot in training camp. They don't want training camp injuries. They can't afford training camp injuries. So we will see. But um, um, they're definitely headed in the right direction. I like his staff. I like the way they're recruiting uh, in Florida, in Texas, um, in St. Louis, and in Chicago. And they have a big recruiting weekend tomorrow night. Lovey has his cookout tomorrow night where he has big time recruits coming in. Tomorrow's a big night for them. Um, basketball. What do you see as realistic timeline for when Illini basketball should be respectable again? Will it happen this year, next year? And by respectable, I mean in the NCAA tournament without having been on the bubble. Well, um, I think they'll be respectable this year, but I don't know that that means they won't be on the bubble. I think people would be happy with them being on the bubble if they got in the tournament. I think getting in the tournament is going to be a big breakthrough when it happens. And, um, and, and, and I think they have a chance to get there this year, and more importantly, Brad Underwood thinks they have a chance to get there this year. Another basketball question. We hear so much hype about how Brad Underwood has always made it to the NCAA tournament, but we also heard a lot of hype about how great John Gross was. Is there any real reason we should believe the hype about Brad Underwood? Well, yeah, I mean, he's been in the tournament every year. He's been a head coach, three years at Stephen F. Austin, one year at Oklahoma State. Um, I think there's an incredible amount of national respect for him. If you talk to na coaches nationally about Underwood, they all go, Wow, that dude can coach. Um, they come, people come to him to talk to him about his offense, about things that they do. Um, and I like the way this staff has recruited already. When you think about it, they lost some players. Um, they lost some recruits from the previous regime that, that John Gross had, had supposedly locked up. Um, but they were able to piece things together in, in a hurry to get a lot of that back. Uh, Mark Smith, a huge get for them. Um, Mark Allstork, the transfer from Wright State, big-time player. 
um, and then they got some size late and showed that they were able to recruit internationally, which is something Illinois has not done in the past. So, um, yeah, I'm really excited about the direction basketball is going. Uh, another basketball question, does the 17-18 roster have what it takes to play Underwood's fast-paced offensive style? Well, you know what? Um, we don't know, um, and we're going to find out because uh, Tijon Lucas is going to take on a bigger role this year and be starter at point guard from the start. Clearly, Brad Underwood has embraced uh, what he's seen from Michael Finke, from LaRon Black, from Kipper Nichols, um, and he loves the freshmen that he has in the program. We're going to find out in a hurry um, whether they can play as fast as he wants to or not. I just know they're going to get there in a hurry, uh, whether it all happens this year or not. And then a related question, do you think that his fast-paced style of offense will work in the Big Ten? Again, we're going to find out. I know, I'm looking at their scores last year at Oklahoma State, um, you know, they beat West Virginia 82-75. So they scored 82 against West Virginia, the same team Illinois played last year and scored 57 against. Um, they lost to Kansas 90-85, to but they scored 85 on the Jayhawks, and then they lost in the NCAA tournament 92-91 to a Michigan team that, if you remember, was about as hot as any team in the country at the time. So um, I, I think the thing, we have, when you say fast-paced offensive style, Everybody has heard this stuff about they led the nation in points scored in the first seven seconds. That that's doesn't happen every possession. There are there are times when you can't get going in transition like that, and you have to go into something uh, half court. So, you know, we'll we'll see uh, some games where the scoring isn't all that high, and, there, and then the question becomes, can they defend at that level? And then another basketball question: When should we start worrying that we aren't going to get any decent recruits <laughs> in the 2018 class? Not yet. <laughs> We're not even there yet. So, uh, no, don't worry about that yet. They're, they're in on a lot of kids. They cast a wide net, and, um, and, and I, I'm not too concerned about that yet. We could, I suppose we could get there at some point, but definitely not worried about there yet. Um, then another one, I heard you, uh, this is Illinois basketball, Illinois football, excuse me. I heard you on a Champagne radio show yesterday, and you were asked to name three players you're excited to see once Illinois training camp begins on Monday. Then I had to leave my radio and I missed your answer. Aha, uh, who did you say? Well, um, I think I rambled a little bit and probably gave more than three. So um, since this is my show, I'm going to ramble all I want, and I'm going to give you more like um, eight. And one guy I know I said yesterday was Kenyon Jackson, which probably surprised people because nobody's talking about Kenyon Jackson. But I'm trying to pick people that I don't know a lot about. I know a little bit about Chase Crouch. I know a little bit about guys who are returning starters. I don't know about a lot about Kenyon Jackson, and I think defensive line is the most important position on this team. So half of the people that I'm going to be excited to watch are on the defensive line. Kenyon Jackson is a defensive tackle. His dad was a six-time pro bowler in the NFL. He comes from a great bloodline, obviously. Um, if he can team up with, um, with Jamal Milan and be good in the middle of that offensive line, that would be a great start. Another defensive lineman, James Crawford, kid that came here as a defensive back, then became a hybrid player, uh, and now is going to line up at defensive end. He can run. He is really fast. He could be a great edge rusher, rusher but does he have um, the bulk and the, and the instincts to do that? I don't know. Uh, Mikey Dudek, that's almost an unfair one because everybody loves Mikey Dudek and everybody's going to watch Mikey Dudek since we haven't seen him for two years because of consecutive knee injuries. Uh, Larry Boyd is a guy, he's an offensive lineman, he's 6'6", 360 pounds. He like blots out the sun, and I want to see this kid because he may play as a freshman, but I'm a little suspect about his conditioning, so I'm interested to see him. Uh, two other defensive linemen, Tymir Oliver, who I'm familiar with but didn't think anything of until Lovey told me that he is, uh, he's done more in the offseason than they could ever hope for. And Shaw, uh, Sean Edesanya, who for two years, like Mikey Dudek, has been injured, and Lovey thinks can be a factor at defensive end. So those guys. Um, one guy I was hoping to see is um, Dwayne Lawson, the quarterback transfer. Um, he's not going to be there. He um, is still working on his academics at um, Garden City Junior College in Kansas. Um, they hope that he will be there and can enroll in January. I think it's a coin flip if he ever plays. He's got to want to do it, um, you know. Some guys are really good with a football in their hand. Some guys are really good with a book in his hand, in their hand. Some guys can do both. He's been able to do the football part. Uh, and then, okay, food question. Are you ready? 
this is the way this question is worded. Most culinary experts insist using a foil, quote, tent and resting meat for five minutes after pulling it off the grill for all sorts of scientific reasons. Personally, I like to serve meat as quickly and as hot as possible. What's your method? Wow. Um, this is one of my favorite topics. Don't laugh, Ashley. Who's helping me do this? Um, because everybody likes hot food. I mean, if it's supposed to be hot. You don't like hot ice cream, but you like hot, hot grilled food. And um, But it's. I think it's essential, particularly, if, you know, like if you're talking about a steak, for instance, it's a little different with chicken. But with a steak, you run the risk of the juices coming out of the meat immediately if you, if you cut it as soon as you take it off the grill. There's also residual cooking. So um, I would leave it for at least five minutes. If it's a really thick piece of meat, 10 minutes when you take it off the grill. I would not tent it tightly. I would put a, a little bit of tent over it loosely to try to retain a little bit of that heat. But what happens, and this is my spiel on um, home delivery pizza, which I no longer do because um, I don't think they've perfected it. This is why Papa Murphy's is big. And I encourage you all to go to Papa Murphy's, and Papa Murphy should sponsor this Facebook live chat, by the way, because by the time you take a pizza out of the oven and it's crisp and it's hot, now you put it in a box and you cover it with foil and you close the box and you put it in a car and you bring it to your home. What's happened? You have all that trapped heat that turns into steam. And steam term turns a hot, crisp pizza into a warm, soggy pizza. And that's a no good. And so you, you go to Papa Murphy's, you get the pizza, you bring it home, you throw it in your oven, and when it comes out then, it's hot, it's crisp, and you don't have any of that steaming effect. The same thing is true with food off the grill. You don't want to tent it uh, in a lot of, a lot of times you don't want to tent it uh, so that you take away that, that crispy char that you've worked to get on the grill, but do let it sit for at least five minutes, 10 if it's a thicker cut of meat. Make sense? I hope so. That's all for now. We're gonna do this every week, uh, 3.30 on Thursdays. You can submit your questions to me by email at mtupper at herald-review.com and Ashley tells me that this will be available on both the Herald and Review Facebook uh, page and the Herald and Review website, herald-review.com in case you're not able to get there at 3.30 and want to look at it later. Um, and any questions or complaints or suggestions, just holler at me and uh, we'll try to address them. Okay? Thanks.